Okay, people, I'm back. Tales from the Pen. This is like a Street Legends edition. If you're new to my channel, please go down, hit subscribe, hit the like. Also, people, because I see a lot of people, you know, they hit me telling me that they don't know that I'm on or they don't know that I dropped the video. Because this is what you have to do. Here's the key. Next to the sub subscribe button, there's a little bell. You got to click on the bell and click all. If you leave it where it says, per when you click on the bell, it'll say personalized and all. If you click the, leave it regular, it just goes personalized. You're never going to get a notification. Click the all. until so right above the personal. You click the bell and you'll see another thing will pop up. And you click the all. And that's it. You're going to see me every time I do a live video. Every time I put up a video, you guys are going to know about it. Because I get a lot of people complaining like, Fred, I don't, you know, I don't. I don't, I don't know when you're on. I don't see your videos when they pop up. I see them two, three days later, you know, when I go check. So now you guys know. Click that all. <clears throat> if you don't click that all, you know, that's what, you know, that's what's going to happen. Anyway, people. So today, I'm going to do a little something different, right? Um, because I heard this brother's name mentioned a few times. And I heard it recently. I heard it from this dude, he was doing an interview, I forgot what the show was, <clears throat> alright, but the dude he was talking about was Hamo, Daryl Bong, you know what I mean, a, a hitter from out in Brooklyn, now I heard him mention him, and I'm like, okay, you know, because I know Hamo, so the dude, I think his name was Haitian Jack, you know what I mean, you know, those in New York know who Haitian Jack is, <clears throat> anyway, he was on the show, and he they were talking about Hamo, and Haitian Jack was like, you know, he wasn't really a hitter. He was just a fighter. You know, that's when I was like, wait a minute. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Hold on a second. You know? Because, yeah, he was a fighter, but, you know, that's not really what he was known for. You know what I mean? So, that's just the way it is. You know, and anybody that knows Haitian Jack and his history, you know, there's some people that just, you know, will never give other people their props. You know what I mean? Because they think they the top dog. You know what I mean? And that's just the way, that's that's how I looked at that. But anyway, <clears throat> so for those who don't know who Hamo, Daryl Baum is, ha a.k.a. Homicide, he was um, known as Mike Tyson's bodyguard. And he was supposedly, <clears throat> allegedly, the shooter of 50 Cent when he got shot nine times out there in Queens, you know. Supposedly, according to court records, right? Because a lot of things I'm gonna talk about is is is, is based on uh, federal transcripts and a lot of things based on, on you know, stuff that, that's public knowledge. So I, I don't want anybody to think I'm just, you know, making stuff up or, 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 or not really know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so, again, you know, uh, Hamo was a, 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 a you know a hitter out out in Brooklyn. You know what I mean? Everybody everybody knows that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody who know him, you know, know who he is. And supposedly, like I said, he was supposedly the shooter <clears throat> of Fifty Cent. You know, if you listen to Fifty Cent's "Many Men," you know what I'm saying? "Many Men," with death for me, right? Blood in my eyes. You, you guys know what I'm talking about. If you know that song. He says, Hamo shot me, and three weeks later, he got shot down. Right? Now, it's clear that I'm here for a real reason. Because he got hit like I got hit, but he ain't fucking breathing. Man, he man. <clears throat> that, that song is actually hot. You know what I mean? You know, so. But he basically said it. You know, Hamo shot me, and then he got shot three weeks later. And he, he, he you know, he died. We're going to get to that in part two. We're going to make this a two-part series right here. All right? So my first interactions with him <clears throat> was in the penitentiary. And I remember I was in this little medium-secure prison. And when he got there, <clears throat> I guess other people saw him. And then word just spread. And that's how it is with certain people. When they come through, they have a reputation or they have a name. It spreads real fast, you know what I mean? Like, yo, such and such just came up, such and such is here, oh. And everybody was like, oh, Hamo's here. <clears throat> Hamo's here. Oh, this place is about to be turned up, Hamo's here. Like, this is, this was the vocabulary, this is what was going on, this is what people were talking about, Hamo's here. So, you know, 
<clears throat> dude in my house, you know, my man Pop, he was like, yeah, I know Hamo Hamo, you know, he gets busy in the streets, you know, and, 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 and he had said, because <clears throat> he's a little bit older, and them dudes a little bit older, and he was like, you know, on Rikers Island, they were calling him Mr. President. Like wherever he go, that's Mr. President. You know what I mean? That he had, you know, he had he had C74, the adolescents on a smash. You know, this is this was the this is what the word was, you know, going around. I'm like, oh okay. So we go to the gym and I, you know, I see a couple of the new the new people because you know who's who, you know who's been there, who's whatever, you know who's who just got there, whatever. <clears throat> so I see him, I see a couple dudes, and I see a little light skinned dude. So I'm thinking Hamo was like, you know, 6'9", 290, you know what I'm saying? I'm thinking Hamo was this monster. You know, I see this little light-skinned dude, and, you know, he's about maybe 5'7". I'm like, that's Hamo? You know what I'm saying? You know, real shit. But when you're around him, he carry himself in a way that, you know, people understand that, you know, you know, things can happen, you know what I mean? And, um... I seen a couple, I seen like three things with 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 with, with Hamo. Three three incidents in the spot, right? So um one time this dude um something happened in the mess hall. <clears throat> Him and this dude Papo. Now Papo was supposed to be, you know, he was an older dude, you know, at the time maybe Hamo was in his thirties. And, you know, Papa was maybe in his mid-40s or something like that. But Papa was supposedly an alternate on, like, the Puerto Rico national boxing team. Like, he was he was nice with it. You know what I mean? So him and Hamo got into it. And they went outside the mess hall. And it was, like, back in the days, schoolyard brawl, you know. That's how it was. Like, it was like, oh, 3 o'clock, meet me in the schoolyard. Oh, everyone stands around. There was no police around. It was crazy. Just me and you. This little jail I was in. You know what I'm saying? And, and... And they, you know, and the crazy part about that fight was that Hamo had uh, hurt his ankle. Like, Hamo wasn't really into sports too much. You know, he was boxing. But, you know, he played basketball here and there. So something had happened with his ankle or whatever. And he had, a, a, like, a cast on the bottom part of his foot, and, you know, up the leg a little, a little bit. Like, he had a little cast on. And Papo had a cast on his right hand. He had broke his hand or something like that. And he had a cast on his hand, you know. So he had a cast on his right hand, and Hamo had a cast on his foot. That was some crazy shit right there, you know what I'm saying? You ain't never gonna see that shit in life, right? You know what I mean? But right here on Tales from the Pen. So, you know, they went at it for a while, and you can see, and again, every Papo had that reputation, but Hamo, you know, him and Hamo, it was a good, like, you know, he got his, he got his, but you can see Hamo was nice with his shit too, you know what I'm saying? Like, Hamo wasn't just a, one of these dudes talking, and they just come in and start, nah, he was, you know, bop, 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 bop. You know, he was throwing them. You could see that, you know, he knew what he was doing. You know what I mean? Because, you know, sometimes people talk that, and then you could look at them and see some hand movements, or they show you something, you could be like, nah, he ain't, you know. Right? You ever watch a movie, like, where it's supposed to be about a basketball star, and you can watch him dribbling and playing, and, like, in a, you know, in their structured scenes, and you could just tell, like, he's not that good. You know? But that wasn't the case. You could tell he was good, he was good, good fight. You know, the police came, broke it up. You know, they got like 10 days in the box for it. But it was, you know, it was all love. The second time was... Okay, so... <clears throat> his girl came on a visit. Okay? Hamo's girl came on a visit. And this other dude was on a visit too, okay? <clears throat> and he's talking with his wife. And he's like, you know, and he's gossiping about other dudes... That's, that's on the dance floor. We call it the visitor room, the dance floor. So <clears throat> him and his girl talking, but he's gossiping about all these other inmates. You know what I'm saying? He does this, he does that. You know, to, you know, like telling secrets and shit. You know what I mean? And you know, you know, trying to be trying to pillow talk in the visitor room over some over some chips, over some chips and soda. You know what I mean? He's trying to talk pillow talk and shit. This dude, his name was D. So he's telling his girl. That um, Hamo <clears throat> had another girl come see him, you know, he's always having the other girl come see him, you know what I mean? He's playing his wife, and you know, you sitting here playing with me. Like, he's arguing with his girl and then bringing other people into it. So, not knowing that Hamo's girl and this girl came up on the bus together, and they sat next to, to each other on the, on the bus ride up to the prison. 
okay? They met somewhere at 5.30 in the morning somewhere in Manhattan and the bus takes you to certain prisons and they have vans and buses, okay? They have, you know, a structured thing where you could go somewhere at 5.30 in the morning, 6 in the morning and wait for a specific bus to take you to a specific jail. <clears throat> so he's talking to her <clears throat> and he's telling her, you know, about how most good. Now, them two got cool on the way up. So on the way back, they sat together, and she told him, she was like, you know, I, I just want you to know that, you know, my man told me, you know, your, your, your husband be having other girls come, and, you know, thinking that she's cool and friendly, you know, the, you know, the girls got friendly over, six, over a six, you know, five-hour trip, whatever it was. This was only a few hours away, but whatever, they got cool on the trip. You see what I'm saying? So when later on that night, she got home, Hamo called. And, and his wife started flipping out. Who you having, girl? You know, such and such told me, blah, blah, blah. He was like, what? The dude worked in the pre-release program. Okay? The pre-release program is just what it sounds like. When people are about to get released, they go to this program. It's supposed to, you know, indoctrinate them back into society. You know what I mean? It's supposed to teach them certain skills that are going on right now in society to help them to adjust to society when they get home. So he worked in the pre-release program, boom. Uh, Hamo and I remember L, my man L son, shout out to L son, you know what I'm saying? Another banger out there from Brooklyn. Now, him and L, Hamo and L went up right up in the pre-release, man. You know what I'm saying? Were, again, there was no police, there's like one police around the corner somewhere. And they did, they did D dirty. I mean, they, they destroyed D, they destroyed his life. Like, to the fact that, you know, uh, Hamo's, <coughs> Hamo's Timberland Prince was in the dude's face. Across his forehead. You know what I'm saying? Where the dude walked around like that, you know. He tried to hide it. To tell you the truth, he ain't tell or not. I mean, he was fucked up. They knocked him out. They, you know, like, they drugged him. Smashed his face. And he never told. Like, he walked around looking like the caveman, but everyone knew there's no way you could do that. Once the police see you, they're going to be like, yo, come here, what happened to you? You know what I mean? Like, there was no hiding his elephant face. You know what I mean? That elephant man face. There was no hiding that. And he had the Timberland boot. But he didn't tell. You know what I'm saying? He didn't tell. You know, he, he left the jail. Because they didn't know who his assaulters was. Which was odd, because usually the police know. Like, even if the dude won't tell... The police know because there's so many fucking informants, even in penitentiary, y'all. So many informants in the penitentiary, it's the truth. Anyway, the third one was, the third incident with him was the final one. Was, okay, so the other kid's name was King, I remember this. Like, I remember bits and parts of actually what happened. But King, he, you know, he was a big dude, gold teeth. He was like from, like, I think Newburgh or Poughkeepsie. He was like from a little bit upstate, okay? And so he was running his mouth about Hamo, talking about, you know, Hamo. He, like, when he was in the other house with Hamo, Hamo was trying to run the TV. Hamo was bullying people, blah, blah, blah. This is what he was saying. So it got back to Hamo, right? It was something, it was something, something along those lines, right? Like that, the actual, that part could be debated, but it got back to Hamo, whatever was said, okay, now Hamo's not even in the house with this guy, okay, so my man Perry, you know what I mean, we were just talking about this on Facebook there, he, you know, we got in contact, that Facebook is crazy, because, you know, I haven't seen my man in many years, and it put us together, and, you know, salute to Facebook, and salute to my man Perry, so, he, you know, and, and I knew me and Perry was cool, he's from around my way, so anyway, but he wasn't in my house, so he, this is his house, so he, Perry, call the Kid King in the bathroom, right, because the Kid King also punched him, punched my man Twin in the face, or something like, he punched his dude Twin in the face, who was real cool with Perry, him and Perry was real cool, so Perry wanted to get him, and Hamo wanted to get him, you know what I'm saying, and Hamo, you know, he, he was talking shit about him, so Perry called him into the bathroom, okay, now, mind you, Hamo's not even in this house, he was in another house, Okay, so he called, Perry called King in the bathroom and was like, yo, why you, you know, why you talking shit or whatever? Bang! Perry stole on him. His gold tooth come out of his mouth flying. Boom. Right? And all of a sudden, Hamo kick open the bathroom door. Hamo was standing on the toilet. Okay, with a knife. Hamo, he was standing on the toilet bowl. True story on everything I love. 
kicked out, you know, opened the, the bathroom door, you know what I'm saying, the stall door, and that went to work on dude. Boom, boom, he hit him twice in the chest before dude even realized what was going on. Like, he ain't, like, where this dude come from? His motherfucker jumped out the toilet, you know what I'm saying? Like, bang, 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 started hitting him, you know? And, the, you know, the kid, you know, Perry hit him because... The kid jetted out the bathroom, Hamo jetted out the house, nobody, you know, police didn't see him. Cause he wasn't even in that house. You know what I'm saying? And then, um, the kid didn't tell. But that was such a serious offense that, you know, the rats definitely went and told because people were scared of Hamo. You know what I mean? So they definitely went and told. But the kid himself didn't tell. So, you know, King up there, he took that like a champ got poked in his chest several times in his back before he ran up out that bathroom. I'm gonna try to kill him in that bathroom. True story, you know? So, you know, but the, those are three things, but he was a good dude, you know what I mean? He used to try to play basketball a little bit, couldn't really play that good or nothing like that, you know what I mean? But, you know, we had talks, man, he was, you know, like I say, he was a good dude. People scared of him, but he was a good dude. At one point, he was my, he was my neighbor, you know what I'm saying? It was cubicle, so. I stand up, I, he's right here, you know what I mean? Like, so we used to have conversations here and there, you know what I mean? You know, and, and you know, knowing who he was and knowing that he was going to go home soon, you know, I used to tell him all the time, you know, like, you know, the streets is different, you know what I mean? You know, man, you know, <laughs> he just had that mentality, you know, he just had that, that spark about him, you know what I mean? He was like, you know. Like, he used to ask me questions, like, your friend, what you gonna do when you get home? I said, well, you know, I'm gonna get into this, uh, hopefully, this elevated construction business, because my pops had been in it, you know, for, for damn near 40 years, so, you know, when I get out, hopefully, they was gonna help me get in that union, and this is when he was like, man, I said, what you gonna do? He said, I'm going home to get money. That's what he told me, that's what he said. You know, he said, I'm going to get it. That's what I do, you know. I'm like, okay, you know, I hear you, man. But, you know, the streets is different now. You know, the streets are different now. You know what I mean? You've been locked up a while. You know, then, you know, he got bounced. But he was a good dude. Then he got bounced around the jail, and then that, that incident happened. And after that incident happened, again, the kid King didn't tell. But Hamo and Perry, they packed them up that night. You know, the police came to the both of them, you know, you pack it up, you pack it up. You know, and they shipped them both out to jail. Even though they, like, you know, the only way, really, even though the snitches tell, it's kind of like the only way for you to get convicted of cutting or stabbing somebody is if that person tells. Or <clears throat> if a corrections officer actually sees you do it. If the police say he saw you do it, you're done. That's it. There's no beating that. You understand? So... Unless that person actually that you stab tells it was him or him, you, a lot of times you'll get away with it, but you'll get shipped out to jail. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter that the snitches go and tell the lieutenants. It was such and such. They still don't have evidence on such and such. Yeah, even though we know he did it, no one's going to tell? All right, pack them up. And they'll ship your ass up, you know, to damn near Canada somewhere. They'll ship your ass 12 hours away. You know what I mean? And that's what they do. That's how, that's the games they play. So, yeah, I just wanted to speak a little bit about, you know, Hamo. And, um, you know, after he went home is when he really got his name. After he went home is when, you know, things, you know, things went, things were, things went crazy in the streets. You know, after he went home, you know, he got, you know, Tyson, Tyson put him on the payroll. Mike Tyson, shout out to Mike, put him on the payroll as a bodyguard. Which is cool because, you know, here's the reality. You know, we know Mike don't need no damn bodyguard. You know what I'm saying? Who the hell's going to mess with Mike, right? Let's just be real. But especially back then. Who going to mess with the 53-year-old Mike? You see Mike going out? Boop, 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 boop. You see Mike? Mike is a different breed, people. Like, Mike is... Mike is Mike. So Mike ain't really need no damn bodyguards. But that's, you know, out of friendship. Yo, you one of my bodyguards. Put him on the payroll. You know what I mean? But... You know, he still, you know, he still had one foot there and he had, you know, the streets, you know what I mean? Mike Tyson even gave him a shout out um, after he beat Luis Avarice. If, if he watched the, uh, the post fight, 
he says, you know, I'm doing this with a heavy heart, you know, I had to bury my best friend this week, you know, rest in peace to Daryl Baum, right? That's, that's who that was. And we're going to get to all of that. We're going to get to his involvement in, in, in many different things. We're going to get to his, you know, we're going to get to his uh, murder, you know, and, you know, which also included eventually his brother getting murdered too a few years later all for the same incidents, you know? We're gonna talk about, you know, little Kim and her ex-boyfriend, you know, and, 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 and what was going on in the wars in Brooklyn surrounding Hamo. So, on that note, people, I'm gonna end part one. I'm gonna drop part two either tomorrow or Wednesday. Please stay tuned. And remember, people, subscribe and hit the all. Hit the bell and click the all. I'll see y'all in part two.